Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to uh, Game Over, the podcast. Uh, nice to be with you after a three-week wait. Uh, my fault. Uh, usually we're on every two weeks, but uh, I had to spend some time. I had to. I was forced to spend some time uh, in Europe, uh, Scotland and France, where I was doing some shows. So, which is uh, actually kind of funny because now to just to get a chance to talk back in English again, which I didn't get to do much in France, and I did in Scotland. But whenever they they would answer back, I would understand one. Have you ever been to Scotland? Never. No, I was supposed to go probably like seven, eight years ago, but it's for a golf trip. So I missed that. I got hurt. I think I got my appendix taken out like the night before. So Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to laugh, but it's like, okay. <laughs> well, you. it's great country, man. Great people too. Amazing people actually. Right. And then, uh, but really uh, you have to like, you know, kind of, you gotta, you gotta train your ears to, uh, to understand uh, when they talk. But I mean, at the same time, it's such, it's such, it's such a great accent. I mean, it was just, uh, you think they feel the same way about your English? I think everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm on, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, on the roll today. I think uh, for some reason, uh, anyway. Uh, of course, you've recognized uh, my co-host Eric Gagne, Eric Gags Gagne. Why, do, why am I saying your name in English? It's very funny. In French, I go Eric Gagne, and then you become Eric. All of a Eric sudden, Gagne. So, exactly. You had a big week, man. You had a big weekend. I want to talk about that. You went yeah, to uh, Cy Young's uh, hometown. Yeah, newcomers town in Ohio. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. I didn't th I didn't expect anything. It's a village. There's literally three thousand people there, and uh, for me, just to go up there, they asked me to go every year. They do a uh, it's called the Cy Young Weekend. Yeah, and they bring all the you older want, you, want to, you want to point your trophy again because it's kind of a tradition. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> If you don't know my fans right here, <laughs> 2003. Yeah. <and> yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, and, and the first time you went, which must have been just a great, uh, a great, a great uh, thrill. Yeah, I was just actually I didn't know what to expect. I went up there, and then they just showed. They, don't, they told me they're going to give me a tour, so I went to his grave, which was unbelievably emotional because I, you know, I felt the pride and the whole, the whole village, basically the whole town, just you know, they stopped for a week. They just really do everything for Cy Young and they just kind of told me about the story about him and uh, it's just it was pretty amazing I've learned so much about it It was a lot of fun great great cause because uh we saw the house the house is kind of run down a little bit so hopefully uh some people can come up and help him because it's a beautiful city it's in the middle of nowhere and then uh yeah it was fun just learning about the whole history of Cy Young Cyclone War or Cyclone Young that's his name uh, it was a lot of fun. It was really yeah. cool. Just meet all the people, hear about all the stories about him. How he, he cut wood for his training. It's a little bit different. I, I took a picture of, a, of well, his axe. Yeah. He had an axe. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> well, of course, I mean, obviously, you know, the tra uh, training techniques back then, uh, a little bit different. I don't know, try to run faster than the train or something or whatever. You know, you had to do what you could. But well, They uh, did something right. They did something right because when you pitch 7,300 innings or whatever it was and you play for whatever X amount of years and – Pitch for 55 games in a year. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I mean, they did play 150 games back then. People think like 100 years ago they played 80 games. I don't know. They've been playing over 150 games for like uh, over a century. But, uh, you know, I mean, to, like you said, man, to pitch every three days. Uh, and out of the 50, you said one year you pitched 55 games. There was 47 55. complete games. I mean, it's, di it's different <laughs> yep. times. I mean, obviously we'll never see that again and stuff. But uh, before we bring our first guest today, um, I'm going to talk about him right now, uh, Frank Frangillo, who's the director of entertainment for Savannah Bananas. A uh, great organization, a roaming team, uh, very entertaining, but a very high quality, high caliber baseball, but especially with new ideas. Uh, we're going to talk to him in a few seconds. Um, he was about to go to bed, but because uh, you told him 8.45, but you said Arizona time, Eric. You get, you, you, oh, you, you, my, I did. Uh... <laughs> I did not do that. Well, I'm getting used to it now because whenever you tell me, and I'm call, I'm going to call you this time of day or whatever, I say, okay, I'm going to have two hours. But uh, yeah, but you're in Europe. In Europe, it kind of messed me up a little bit. My bad, <laughs> yeah. Zach. But um, uh, uh, right before we go, because I mean, um, the um, obviously you know, Cy Young, 511 wins. The second was Walter Johnson, 417, and then we go to I think maybe I wonder if one of the Negro brothers. Uh, Necro Brothers uh, got five third, uh, close to five fifty. Anyway, we'll see. But the thing is, obviously, uh, here we go. Okay, so uh, oh, Glover Alexander three seventy three. Okay, we got the uh, oh Clemens got three fifty. Really? Wow. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Guy. Probably the last guy to get the three hundred, right? 
Uh, I don't think we'll see that again. I, I, well, we said it on the French podcast. I think even 350, uh, 250 is going to be tough. But what I was going to say is before we uh, we join Frank, what is the one record you don't think or you'd like to see broken? I would love to see my own record to be broken. That would be kind of cool, but I don't know with the new rules if that's going to happen. You know, that extra ending stuff, I don't think that's going to happen. I'd like to see it so I could get my names in the paper again and be relevant again. But that'd be kind of cool to see it. I don't You're know relevant again? Happen. Is that a cry for help? You, you want me to do like it? Sure. I'm pity. not it's paying enough attention there, to you or whatever. Pity party. <laughs> Your record, 84 straight consecutive uh, saves with, a, with no blown saves. So is, is this, this is where you can point That's to yourself. That's kind of what in a row means. That's yeah. what in a row means. I, I was trying to be specific, so don't give me <laughs> shit for that. But um, you know which one I like to see broken? Is uh, Joe DiMaggio's 56 uh, game hitting streak. I mean that that could be. I mean that's that's a, that's almost impossible. I think that could be one that would be broken. You know, especially It'd now. It'd be nice. The, and then the shift might, might help a little bit. We got a 400 hitter almost right now, so that could be. That that's could right. Be. We didn't even talk about it on the French side. Maybe we'll do it after uh, we talk to Frank uh, when we have some little bit time, a bit of time left over to, to talk about Arias because I, I read uh, not I read I heard something really interesting about him. Um, and also, I was going to say uh, before we bring Frank. Um, People, the, some the real, the, the nerdy, the nerdy like me, baseball fans know that uh, Joe Gimaggio's streak of 56, but th that one game where he uh, got no hit, I think I don't know if it was after, uh, before or after the 50, uh, the 56 game hitting streak. Yes, he, he had a second hitting streak of 44 games. So um, did I say Frank? I meant Zach. Jesus Christ. I did. Three times I said Frank. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Zach. I'm also tired too. I'm jet lag. So uh, Zach. Exactly, from Frank. Gillo. I know, but geez, I've, anyway, <laughs> but what I was going to say is he also had a 44 game hitting streak. So, on a hot, like for 100 days, there was 99 days that he. That he, he that they got a single man, so like, yeah. you know. But people are gonna say, ah, oh, it's not the same baseball. The pitchers are not as good, blah blah blah. Ah, but, you still, know, come just, on. You had 56 in a row and then 44 in a row. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter where you play. You play junior, play in a little league. It's still a pretty yeah. Plus, I mean, he, and he was married to Marilyn Monroe, so I mean, you, you can't have a better life than that. That's so, a big you know. plus. Hey, uh, big plus. I want to thank uh, also. Uh, we got a, um, a gift from uh, Frank Vandetti, who's one of our uh, correspondent. I guess you can call that. Our, our, our reporter of the uh, junior, uh, Ligue, de, Ligue de Baseball Junior Elite du Québec. And uh, they made that specifically. Well, there's only one, so on, we can't market it right now. I mean, we could, but we haven't. we got to make more. So I'm drinking out of your face is what I'm doing. Yeah, we're creating uh, we're creating a, a new market. Yeah. Just one of one. Exactly. We're going to have another one at some point, different color. And it's time to, I'm going to scratch, and Scott did call to get our first guest who's going to, you know, with, an, with an Italian name like that, and I called him Frank instead of Zach, which is already, my bad, my bad. So the next uh, the, the, the next segment, we'll probably start with like, what the fuck's up with that? So we're allowed to swear. It's a podcast. Please welcome our guest, Zach Frangella. My apologies, buddy. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was expecting that. And then thanks for being up uh, so late, uh, despite uh, my friend's, uh, you know, <laughs> misunderstanding of, uh, of course, uh, you know, that not the whole planet revolves around Arizona time. But anyway, how you doing, man? It's all good. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here. God, man. I mean, actually, I'll be totally honest with you. Eric's, uh, you know, when we started talking about podcasts, uh, was the one who got me into like following uh, what uh, what you did with the uh, bananas, uh, Savannah bananas. And the more I read about it, the more I follow you guys. The more it's like, man, it's like, as 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 Luffy. I'm not gonna say goofy. As Luffy as the whole project is, there's so mm -hmm. much, there's so much nice and be beautiful things behind it. What you bring back to the community, uh, the, the the whole entertainment value, the mission of like bringing people back in the stands, the reasons why, and and challenging the game with yeah. the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the big thing is, is that baseball is is fun and, and banana ball and what we've created is fun. Um, the big thing was, is that the entertainment in baseball shouldn't be separate, you know, that, that they should be together and combined into one. Um, and, you know, we were originally part of the Coastal Plain League in our inception in 2016. So just a little bit of backstory. The, the Bananas started in the Coastal Plain League, which is kind of similar to the Cape um, for those who are familiar with college baseball. So yeah. uh, guys coming in. You mean caliber-wise or age-wise? Um, just age – well, both actually. Um, you know, guys – it was more of like the – 
where people are coming from and where where it yeah. is so as you know their college season ends they jump into summer ball and there's different places that you can play cape being one of them and then yeah. the coastal plain league is also one of them and so the bananas in 2016 joined the coastal plain league as an expansion team and jesse and emily cole, cole the owners they originally came from gastonia north carolina um and uh, and really just wanted they understood the difference of uh if you do things normal you'll get normal results and i love it that they had to go all in on the entertainment side of things and uh you know they might not have an effect on the game or an input on the game but at the end of the day they're still going to have a great show and so jesse uh jesse really put an emphasis on the entertainment and uh since 2016 um they've sold out every single game including the banana ball games that we're playing now um and, and in 2021 is when banana ball first became a reality um so during the time that we were there we did a one city world tour in mobile alabama uh which was the first time that this had really been seen in front of fans and banana ball is a uh is a version of the game where the rules are different you know we're playing yep. by different rules the game is faster it's more entertaining uh there's specific rules no bunting bunting sucks uh, whoa, whoa, I, I, I didn't know I, I didn't think you'd start right away with the no bunting thing because when i read the you know the new rules you're like you yeah. guys are really I would have had not have a I would not have had a career if it wasn't for bunting. That's the <laughs> only either. thing I Me had, either. man. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, no, I would not have had a career at all if it weren't for bunting. But uh, but no, you know, it, it's built around the fan experience and building fans. And, and the name of our company is Fans First Entertainment. So um, putting the fans first, a twenty five dollar ticket. You know, uh, in Savannah, when you're in Savannah, you're going to get all you can eat food, uh, sodas and snacks. Uh, you're wow. going to get a great show and and you're getting into the game. And, and it's, so it's putting your fans first. You know, we're the only team in the country that we pay your taxes. You know, a twenty five dollar ticket is a twenty five dollar ticket. We'll take care of the taxes. We'll take care of the beer sale. We'll take care of all of that. So um, it's putting fans first, and, and that also translated into banana ball. So going from the CPL and that regular baseball and understanding what the fans really wanted and, and truly wanted, and um, that's how banana ball was eventually born and, and created and now has evolved into what it is today. Uh, did you, was he, no, did go you ahead. Guys, sorry about it. Did you guys ever th figure that would be that successful? Because, I mean, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, I had a chance to go see it, actually experience it, and I was a little yeah. bit out of my out of my element as a pitcher because you're really focused on doing, you know, pitching, getting people out and everything else. And to see the guys going out there just basically playing the game because it's really good. I, I would compare – I compared a little bit to double A almost. It's just the talent is amazing. But did you guys ever thought they would get that successful like this? Because it's it's a, it's amazing. It's the greatest experience I've ever seen. I mean, it's like a Cirque du Soleil around a baseball game. It's very cool. But <laughs> yeah. did you guys ever expect that much? That much like it's a cult following, basically. Yeah, it really is. It's crazy. We're we, we're super thankful for for the fans that we have and that we've been able to create and have over the over the years. Um, to say that we've had the success, uh, you know, to to be upfront, you know, when Jesse first came to me and I first joined the team and he said, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is what we're doing. This is banana ball. Uh, we're going to be playing all over the country in, in three years. And, uh, you know, eventually I'm, we're, we're going to sell out Fenway park. You know, that was one of the things that he told and, me in and his tell them when you, you're coming from like NHL, you played, you were yeah. in NHL basically working for the night. You went from the NHL to the banana ball. Like it's kind of like, correct. I mean, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely funny talking to uh, all my friends and parents, especially when I'm living in Vegas and uh, I'm part of the Vegas Golden Knights, which is one of the biggest and most exciting and best entertainment teams in the world. And I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to go work for a fruit down in Savannah, Georgia. They, that was a that was a really interesting conversation yeah. to have with a lot of them. But uh, but the so 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 was, that, so if anybody wants to ask for career advice. Do we skip? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you felt, yeah, man, you followed your heart. I mean, you missed out on the Senate Cup ring, though. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to rub it in, but you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, it's they, all right. It's all right. I have some good friends. They sent me over a hat and a shirt. I was happy enough with that. <laughs> but um, honestly, I mean, I love those crazy, well, crazy decisions, like this impulsive decisions of like, I, yeah. I need a new challenge. I need something else. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't think it's one of those decisions where you go two plus two equals four or it pays that much money. You just got to follow your heart, follow your gut feeling, right? Right. And, and Jesse, I mean, 
bless him, he's very good at telling his story and telling the story of what this is and inspiring people. And uh, I was my trial or my my path to getting there. Um, I was there on an audition basically with that one city world tour. So we had games that started banana ball games that started in Savannah, and then we went. To- to mobile like i said um and that was actually a trial for me so i didn't know necessarily if i had the job yet or what the job would be um and then i was lucky enough to be brought on for the coastal plain league because we only played one banana ball game so it was back to regular baseball and that's when uh, about a month in is when i was offered the director of entertainment role but um yeah like you said it was a leap of faith it was it was a challenge it was something new and i truly truly believed in what gem Uh, Jesse and Emily and the entire organization stood for and um, where they were going. I I truly believed in banana ball and I wanted to be a part of it. And, um, you know, I'm thankful I made that decision because it could have been really easy to be like, you know what, I'm comfortable here in the NHL and I don't want to leave and, and I'm going to just stick here. But um, I'm really proud of what we've been able to accomplish over the years since being here. And um, really happy that I ended up taking that leap of faith and, and joining the bananas. Yeah, it's not that bad because I've always heard, you know, if you can't go to Vegas, Savannah should be everyone's second choice. Yeah, so. I hear it all the time. <laughs> Why Savannah? I played, so people don't know that. I played my first year, I played in pro ball. It was in Savannah. The first time I ever fell in love with from a girl from Savannah. And then why? Did, what made you guys go to Savannah? Why, why Grace's Stadium? Yeah, I think, so Jesse and Emily, um, once, so <laughs> funny story. Uh, Jesse proposed to Emily um, at a Gastonia Grizzlies game um back in you know 24 i want to say it was 2015 and emily surprised him with a trip to savannah and they're they were baseball junkies through and through jesse played growing up you know he played in um you know played at wofford he was a d1 pitcher so he was you know he's he was a baseball guy through and through just like the rest of us um and so they wanted to go see the ballparks and they went to a sand nats game which is was at the time the triple a affiliate for the mets and they walked in and there was nobody there and so Jesse immediately called up and was like, I, if, if this market ever becomes available, he, talking to the Coastal Plain League, because Gastonia at the time was a part of the Coastal Plain League, said, you know, if this market ever becomes available, we want it. And they saw it as an opportunity to grow what they believed in when it came to the show side of things and building fans. Um, and I think they fell in love with the city. I mean, the city's great. Savannah's so and- great. I've, I've, I drove through it, but enough. I saw enough that the city is very historical. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. First ever planned city, fun fact, um, about Savannah. So, um, but historically in Savannah, baseball had failed. You know, that, that, ballpark uh, Grayson stadium has been around since the 1920s really um, all across from the left field pop foul pole all the way to center field um we list out all the teams that have been there and some of them were there for a year some of them were there for two years but um truly baseball in savannah had failed and so when they moved to savannah just like you know people thought i was crazy from going to the nhl to the coastal plain league they were calling them crazy because they weren't different they weren't unique you know they were like we had we've heard all the the community said we have heard this we've heard this from the sand nats we've heard this from every other team before you why are you going to be different and truly at that moment it was like okay we have to be different. We have to stand out. And that's when the name, name the team contest happened and they were named the bananas. And Jesse was told he should be thrown out of town by the community and the community basically riled against him and they hated it and uh, everybody hated it. But what they did was they got attention. And that night they were number one trending on Twitter uh, and, and they were getting attention. And that's what we learned. And that grew to that first sellout in 2016 for opening day. And then every sellout from there on out. Um, that's amazing the way that's amazing the way you guys have used social media. Cause that's another, that's another tool that the players, the team, the players don't use as much. And I've noticed like you guys are just taking it by. So I've seen like Paige Speranix, you know, she's posting yeah. about you guys. I mean, you're talking about millions and millions of people. It's pretty impressive. And like, but I, I, I'm going to go with like, how do you guys select your players? Is that social media have something to do with it? Or is it like, how do you guys select you guys? Because now I'm sure there's guys lined up just to play because it's it's really fun. It looks fun. It looks like it's a party. You guys yeah. are really together. Is it I mean, like an open the- tryout? Is it like, 
Yeah, so we have uh, the the trial process is actually really interesting. Um, at, you know, at the start of this, and when we were going into our summer series last year, we picked up Jackson Olson, who um, was a part of the MLB Creator class. Um, so he had a TikTok following of you know just under a million at the time, um, and that was a big deal. You know, having that media personality is a big deal. But then we also have tryouts as well, which are invite only, and those tryouts are we're looking for guys that have played professional ball we're looking for guys that have played in college um but we're not just looking for the best ball, baseball player and we're not looking for the guy that's just a you know a good fan or just good on social media you know you have to be able to hit a curveball and that's that's not easy to do um and so just any guy that's big on social media can't just come out and be on the bananas um as, as much of a cheat code as i wish that would be um there is an element of having both. And so what we do is we call that in our kind of guy, uh, Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron, our head coaches are incredible at um, picking these people and, um, you know, finding the guys that are multi-talented people that are good on social media and have played uh, baseball professionally or in, at the collegiate level. And then we bring them to a tryout and these tryouts are, you know, way different than any trial you've ever seen. You know, we're not just running drills. We're not playing just banana ball for three hours. You know, there's a dance station, there's a TikTok station, there's a fan engagement set uh, station. And then after all that, that's when we get into the, the fundamentals and banana ball, you know, pitchers, can you throw fast? We have a stat that's called MPI minutes per inning. So how long is your, how long does it take you to throw one inning? And I believe the record's like a minute and 13 seconds. And so with live batting uh, in front of him. Oh yeah. That was a, that was at a game. I want to say in Daytona beach this past year, I believe it was uh, a minute and 13 second long inning. And so pitchers are told to work fast. There's no box and <laughs> things like that. Classic. And so we have to yeah. find those types of guys and that tryout's really helpful for that. Do they need to have some kind of entertainment uh, charisma also on the field? You know what I mean? It's, it's one thing to be, I mean, if you're good on social right. media, you're pretty good also off yeah. the, the phone, you know, where you encounter people in real life, which yeah. is like, you know. Yeah, still a skill absolutely. to talk to people to people <laughs> live, but you know what I mean. It take, yeah, when you see things all package, you also have that entertainment value on the field too, right? Correct. Yeah, and and it gets back to the fans first, the fans first way, and the name of our company being Fans First Entertainment. You know that those guys go through that process and that um, what that is and what that truly means. It is you know going that extra mile for a fan or um, signing those autographs for kids. And, and yeah, that's a big part of the tryout. It's how you're, you know, how they carry themselves when they're meeting someone new, you know, when you walk into a tryout, you have an opportunity to, to meet the entire organization and it is how you present yourself. Um, you know, there's not a lot of directors of entertainment that are running around in the middle of tryouts at baseball games, but, or at baseball tryouts, but with ours, it is, I, I run a full section of it. And so, um, how they communicate with fans, how they communicate with people. Um, and then we're always watching. And one, and one thing we always say is you're always on stage, um, stage being you're always out in the public and you're always repping the brand. Um, because you never know when you're going to be walking around and a 10 year old is going to recognize you from a TikTok that you made a week ago and ask for your picture and ask for your autograph. So um, people that can truly uh, represent the brand and, and the banana as well. And that fans first way. Well, you know, it'd be funny, man. It's actually fun. To if an ex banana actually made a comeback and actually got signed to like, actually, has it ever happened before? That's yeah. why that's such a good season that they yeah. signed a pro contract yeah. again. I mean, just imagine like the value, like we're talking about talent wise and everything else, but now with social media, the value of social media to following and everything else, guys like this, I mean, I think it's going to be, there's something to be said about having guys that are very like personable, very easy to access to the fans and everything else. That's a skill I don't have. I've never had, I'm working oh, on it right now. I, it's hard. I mean, I, I try to pitch. I'm like, you're so one dimensionally <laughs> trying to get out and everything's going around. It's crazy. But just to see those guys able to, I mean, they perform. I first, the first play I saw was in the outfield. There's a fly ball in the outfield. The guy's running around. He turns around, just catches behind his back at the fence. I'm like, this is crazy because I'm like, <laughs> first of all, just to attempt that is ridiculous because you don't want to be, you don't want to embarrass. And then he did it. He caught it. And it's just amazing to see those guys, like you said, fan first. And it, it is like that. And I wish people would see it live because you can't explain it unless you see it live. But it's pretty impressive because it's not that easy to do 
especially guys like us that have been groomed to just focus, no emotions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's kind of boring. But you guys are a little bit afraid to be laughed at at first because when you guys reach out, I didn't really know. I'm like, you know, uh, Savannah, though, what is that? I mean, I was, I was yeah. curious because I heard Savannah. That's why I played. And I thought it was like a circus. But I went over there. It is a circus. It's not, yeah. you know, it is what it is. It's a circus. But it's and a baseball guys, passion it's, also, I imagine, too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, these guys just love it, you too. Can, You're going to oh, love yeah. the game. Yeah. Absolutely. One thing we always say is that this does not work if the baseball isn't great. You know, the baseball has to be fantastic and really good in a really high level for this to even work. Um, you know, going out there and uh, making a bunch of errors, the game, it, it, it sucks, if I'm being honest. Like, if there's a lot of errors and you can't hit, it, it just diminishes the product. And so, at the end of the day, the baseball has to be really, really good. Um and yeah, we have a bunch of guys that have played in indie ball. We have guys that were at the D1 level. Um, we have guys that are coming directly out of college that played in the College World Series. Like these are guys that are coming in that are very talented, um, and they need to be. Like I said, I mean, the we 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 always joke it's a it's a circus that a baseball game breaks out in the middle of. Um, and that's exactly <laughs> what it is, which is okay. fine. You know, that's exactly that's fine. And you know, are we that's afraid so to get laughed at? No, not really. I mean, we're going to do some of the most wild things and we're making so many people smile. It's, you know, you can, you can call someone beautiful a hundred times, but then you call them ugly yeah. once and they're going to remember that forever. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, yeah, every once in a while, someone will say something negative about us on social media and yeah, it stings at first. And we're like, oh, if you could only see it, if you could only be a part of it and like understand it it would make so much more sense to you yeah um, but you know social media come then, on now, yeah, exactly exactly. Yeah. exactly and so and you get, then you, we walk into a ballpark with twelve thousand seats and we sell it out and it's louder than that ballpark's ever been and we break every record of that ballpark and attendance and concessions and uh and i and we create a lot of smiles and that's that's all yeah. that we need are you guys gonna make you guys are gonna make like offsprings too? I mean, it's a question of time before there might be a whole league of like you know, the I don't know the the, the El Paso cherries and then uh, I don't know I'm using like you know the two Tijuana sombreros whatever you know, that's gonna become contagious, don't you think? I hope so. I hope so. I think uh, I I believe there is a a true path for this to turn into some sort of league. I don't know exactly what that looks like, um, but the amount of guys that are coming out of the woodwork and uh you know we we get compared to the harlem globetrotters a lot um and and honestly that's a that's a huge compliment for us if, if you think about it the globetrotters have they revolutionized basketball back when they were first yeah. uh, inception in their inception and you know they were selling out madison square garden and the nba was inviting them to come to their games before games mm -hmm. just to get butts and seats and uh they truly revolutionized the game but the one thing that they didn't complete the job with was you know change and grow and um continue to try new things you know the globe charters have won every single game besides one in their entire history and it was a mistake that they won that game you know our our game is incredibly competitive like none of the actual baseball is scripted i wish i wish on all of my being that i could script hitting a fastball or a curveball but it's impossible yeah. it's, you just can't um they're not playing so, the washington was it the washington generals or the the, the hard play is that what it is correct yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and, and we we travel with two teams which is you know which is why people think that it is scripted that we do travel with the two teams but those games are incredibly competitive the party animals this year who is our other team has grown a following um more than any other minor league and most major league teams in six months of having a social media and and you know they just eclipsed over one million followers on TikTok um you know just a couple weeks ago and they have a winning record this year so the bananas have lost more games than they've won since the beginning of this year and since the beginning of this tour and so understanding that it's like okay there's legitimate competition here and that's where we can see the league going it, it, the creation of a league you know what does this look like with three four five six teams um and, that, can, that brings me up to the next like, what's next are you guys going to do tour in asia are you guys going to go to like europe because i think that'd be the perfect vehicle to grow the yeah. game i mean it's you know entertainment wise guys that don't know the game that well go to europe you got ten thousand players combined wow. in the whole country you show that that's going to bring in some eyeballs. That's going to bring in some very good and like really cool 
you know, the coolness of baseball. Baseball is not as cool. I mean, they're behind eight ball. They've been forever. They haven't changed much. The rules now are changing a little bit. But yeah. they have not been able to reach the youth like they used to. And now yep. I think social media, the way what you guys are doing, I think that'd be the perfect vehicle to grow the game. Do you guys have any, like, tour coming up or, like, Europe or Asia or something? Yeah. I mean, it actually goes back to the One City World Tour that I was talking about. You know, the funny name that everybody laughs at, the One City World Tour. And the World Tour shirt that we had literally said Banana Ball World Tour. And on the back, it had six uh, – mobile alabama's listed out down the back like a concert t-shirt it was hilarious <laughs> but what we said is it's not where we are right now it's where we're going and so i believe you know we will get international um i don't know what that looks like yet um but i'm I, i'm pretty confident that we'll end up international um i know there's a, a massive uh longing for it in, in Canada, in Mexico, in Australia. You know, we just actually played an Australian team in Savannah a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I, I think that there is plans to go international. I just don't know the the next steps. I think the next steps uh, for us, you know, short term wise is um, continuing to to grow this thing and, um, you know, possibly go to major league stadiums next year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, especially those now the with, the, with the landscape of the NILs, you can boost, you can boost some NIL for some kids in college and high school and yeah. all that. You can actually help that up by a ton, but that'd be, inter yeah. that'd be interesting to see because I mean, it's very different, and I love that. That it's you know, you guys are giving the power to the player. To, like, I'll call them the alter egos. It's pretty impressive to watch. And you know, my next question is kind of like, you know, how do you guys pay your guys? Yeah. Like, does it come like compared to minor leagues? No, because I think the minor leagues, so we have the minor league pay and everything else. You guys pay them like, is it per post? Is it what is it? How does that work? <laughs> how can they grow? And how do you guys do that? No, we are we are very uh, adamant on creating a great work environment for these guys. Um, every single one of our guys is paid, um, and they're all paid a better salary than the current AAA player that has never played minor league. Really? Wow. Correct. So, and with that being said, also all of your travel, all of your food, everything is is taken care of by the company um and you're not you know you're not triple bunking you're not p putting eight people in one hotel room and sleeping on the floor like that. that's just not happening um jesse and emily and the entire front office are very big on creating an incredible environment um for our people you know at the end of the day we should be the biggest fans and like i've said you know a couple times now of, of fans first entertainment we should be our biggest fans and that's part of that and so all of our guys are paid um at a very good rate um and it, it's not based on social media. It's just based on like you have a job. Like it's these guys' jobs to be banana ball players. Um, and so that's kind of how it works. Um, where the money comes, you know, merchandise, tickets, and, yeah. and all of that kind of stuff yeah. is great. Plus selling out stadiums that it helps you. Yeah, selling out stadiums <laughs> and, and keeping the ticket tickets and, and everything like that is, is really important for us. I want to talk before we get to the rules because I mean there's some interesting rules. As there's one I love, we'll we'll get to it after. But I mean, this year there seems to be an emphasis on uh, putting light on foster homes, if I'm correct. Yeah, and you uh, are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is, is is it something like there's a different co a cause every year, or is it pretty much like the same, the focus point of the bananas to put that uh, for that uh, not program, but you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Uh, so so Jesse and Emily um, have always been involved in since I've known them in, in foster care. Um, and they um, they have been a part of the foster system for a long time. And this, and uh, Jesse and Emily had this dream and this vision of something in helping the foster community. And they weren't 100 percent sure why until um, how Emily described it, it was one night, um, you know, Jesse said, I have it. And he called, said Bananas Foster, and that's what what it was. And so now, uh, Bananas Foster is a it's a registered five five hundred one c three. And what this is is basically we're here to uh, you know celebrate and encourage foster families and shed light and celebrate these families and and spread awareness. You know, um, celebrate these families that are doing so much. You know, there's over four hundred thousand kids that don't have uh, you know places to live in the united states um and that really troubled them and so what bananas foster is is giving um 
it's basically shedding a light and celebrating these families that are doing so good in the foster community and um, creating the narrative and changing the narrative of what it is. You know, there's always been a negative connotation about, you know, being a foster kid and, and all this. And it's, it, it really doesn't have to be like yeah. that. There's some incredible stories out there. And so um, we just launched uh, the, like I said, the 501 C3 and basically just hoping to um, spread awareness to this and, you know, excite people people and get people involved and help uh, support these families that are doing so much and opening their homes when they truly don't have to, but celebrating them and giving them the opportunity to have a platform and, and just giving them an opportunity to celebrate. That's fine. I'm just going to put something on pause here for a second, because before we do the English uh, version of the podcast, we do the French one and, and, and gags was drinking coffee. Now you're drinking you, the whiskey came out, didn't it? No, no, the no, no, I, came came out. You. I said I wasn't going to drink today. I'm not drinking <laughs> Not today, tonight during the I'm show. I'm watching you, it. buddy. I'm watching you. I, I want to get this. you. <laughs> and my wife made me a coffee. I promise. <laughs> no, you're drinking. Uh, anyway, but I'm just kidding. It's bugging you. But um, the rules now. I don't know. Yep. It, it's, uh, there are nine rules that are specific yep. to Banana Ball uh, without going all through nine. I mean, the idea is to make the game quicker, which is maj what Major League Baseball has been trying to do. There's something that's right. actually like, you know, obviously it's for, you know, like you said, it's, it's for fan fun. The one I like the most is if a fan catches a fall ball, the player's yeah. out. But yeah. there are other things that, you know, I think I'm pretty sure that, you know, Major League Baseball, I mean, they're not stepping out of the batter's box. It's pretty close to that right now. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, stealing first, I love the stealing first also, just to be specific. Yeah. You can steal first at any time. If there's a wild pitch, you can just mm -hmm. take off. Uh, yep. um, I mean, there I mean, there, there are things I think, who came up with these ideas? And you think you can have an influence on a future game of baseball? Yeah. Uh, so how it, yeah, how it stemmed was um, when we were when a part of the Coastal Plain League, um, basically we were taking photos of the fans um you know from the second that gates opened all the way through the end of the game and what we realized is that at 5 30 we had a spike and then at six o'clock the stadium was packed it was full it was at that sellout capacity and then seven o'clock same eight o'clock then 8 30 it dropped off almost 50 percent. so at 8 30 people were leaving and that's not necessarily the show but it is just baseball is a long game yeah um and so what we did is we basically did a survey in the office and said, if you were to change baseball, how would you change it? And we just looked at those responses and then we opened it up to the community and, and we saw the responses and we saw a lot of the same ones of like, you know, two hour time limit, uh, no stepping out of the box, uh, you know, stealing first base. There were rules that we didn't take, like running the bases the opposite way and, and all these things. And, and that's how banana ball was created. And, uh, those rules are very intentional to speed up the game um but then also add that element of fun you know my favorite rule is actually the banana ball sprint which is if uh when ball four happens uh you don't just walk to first base ball four happens and the batter actually takes off into a dead sprint from first second third however far they can go until the defense all of them touch the ball so usually the, well, the all, not the infield all nine positions all all, yeah. all nine positions besides a pitcher and catcher, but technically they started the play. So pitcher throws home, ball four, throws it to short, to second, to second to third, third to first, first left, left to right, right to center. And then there's usually a play at second base. Um, we've gotten to a point now where people aren't running to second base. It's just turning into a hard single uh, because of how fast this has turned into. But you throw the ball away one time and that turns into a triple or an around the park home run. And it's in a really exciting play uh, and, oh, yeah. and really, really cool. But uh, it adds that element of excitement and fun. That's yeah. my favorite rule because then you get a man on second base. You get a man on first. They're going to score. So you better know yeah. who you're throwing to do first. There's got to be a certain order. If you got a man on first, you got to throw the ball differently coming up from the outfield if they're going to score or not. So this is fun. I mean, that's like a – that's why it was so interesting because I, that's why I was wondering how you guys came up with it, but the, it just makes sense. A lots, of, lots of booze, and what would you do if you were a – Yeah. Uh, if you were a, <laughs> yeah. If booze. You were an open the great defense. part about it is that we're there's no red tape here. So, like, when, when you go to an MLB game, there's there's red tape on what kind of dirt you can use on a warning track, Right we're we're setting bats on fire and we're setting pitchers hands on fire like there is no red tape in our game whatsoever uh and so we can change the game to make it better on the fly in fact we just added a rule um about two weeks ago of the challenge we had a, a bang bang play at, at the plate the the call was wrong and 
it turned us to, all right, can we in, implement a challenge without slowing down the game? And so now each team has one challenge per game. If they lose a challenge, they lose the challenge. If they win it, they get it back. But then we also implemented a fans first rule with that of like the fans get a challenge. So one representative is picked during the game, every game. And if you, if they think that they can overturn a call, they can pop a confetti cannon and they have a robe and they get to challenge. No way, really? <laughs> oh man, I want to live that once in my life, man. To make an impact on a game, I want to wear that robe, man. I want to be like, what a great idea, man. That's just amazing. Because you know what's weird is like, you know, baseball is such exactly. a conservative and, game. Yeah. To, 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 to go ahead, it, it, baseball is taken, for, they're trying to catch up at some point. At a certain point, I, I think baseball made the game more interesting for people like us who've been fans forever. But I think it's too late to get, to yep. go and reach those young people and to get that new audience. It's a major challenge for everything that anything that's TV. But for you guys to just shake the house of baseball the way you did, I find that amazing, man. The big thing, though, and, and this is something that I get across a lot, and we don't have to, to – we can coexist. Like baseball and banana ball can be two separate entities that work together, you know? They, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. You can't. It's not like you have to have one or the other. Like me, I, I was a baseball guy growing up. I, I wanted to play in college. I, I was a high school baseball player. Um, you know, a lot of the people in our organization were true diehard baseball fans. And I still can sit down and watch a four hour game. I, I can't. A lot of our people on our staff can't, but I can. And, and a lot of the baseball purists can. They don't have to be like, it's not like when we're doing this, we're trying to, you know, stick it to MLB. We're not. We're just trying to create an experience for our fans, and then MLB has their experience as well. But without sticking it to them, I think you can be a good influence on them without copying your rules and adapting everything you right. guys are doing. It's like, you know, oh, what, you know, they're giving people what they want, which is the biggest challenge that, that right. Major League Baseball is facing yeah. right now, you know, and it was about time we changed. I was right. going nuts because, I mean, I used to, like, you, you can watch a flower games. I haven't done that for for, for forever i would put on a baseball game and do something else and whatever hear the crowd cheering i would go back and watch what happened now i find myself sitting down and actually watching the game but it took forever to get me back and i'm a die hard fan so that's what i said it's it, it, it was about time they would adjust because i mean I, guys they've got out of the box the glove the gloves slash, slash, slash. you're betting 206 it's not working stay in the fucking box sorry i had to say it <laughs> Hey, I, all good <laughs> <laughs> but hey, listen, listen uh zach thanks for uh, you know staying up with us i'm sorry that uh, gas gave you the wrong time and uh next time we actually because we're gonna talk again you know i mean honestly i'm going to baseball trips every year man i'm i want to stay in touch with you and i want to i want to wear that robe man i want to be the judge once i want to go i want to go back to savannah me and you are going to do a trip we talked about doing a couple trips we're going to go to yeah. savannah because i haven't been there a long time so promise you we'll do a trip there I want to show Martin because we're going to probably do a podcast because that was, that was really impressive. Just that, that when the fans come be in, amazing, like, well, man. it's so cool. It's fun. No, I mean, but let's do the podcast. Let's do the podcast, podcast live on the field. Love it. Love before it. before the game. Uh, hey, Zach, thanks yeah. again for being uh, with us. And uh, we'll talk to, we'll talk soon for sure, man. Thank you guys. Talk soon. Zach. Thank you guys for having me. Oh Thank man. You, man. Take care, man. All right, man. It's time for the next segment, which we called the relief. We got uh, we got two segments left. We've got a couple of things I want to talk to you about. We we made the intro quicker because because uh, we didn't want to keep Zach uh, up too late because you gave him the wrong information. But um, just uh, no. But I'm gonna see the relief. Uh, that's gonna happen again. That's oh. gonna happen again. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, I count. I'm counting on it. But um, <laughs> man, let's. You want to talk about the Eli De La Cruz phenomenon right now in Cincinnati? I mean, first of all, for those who follow the podcast. And uh, I want to make to – you didn't even mention anything about that. A week and a half ago, I predicted that the Reds would be would soon be in first place. I didn't say they would actually win the division. I think they have a good chance. I think we're under – I think we're underestimating the Cubs. No, no, no. People are talking about the Cubs right now. They're actually – it's a weak division. I'll give them that. Whoever wins might be playing like barely above 500. But you know what? 
and it's funny because two years ago the owner of the Mets kind of sold the whole team. Two or three years ago it was like you know this. It's just pretty much you know every high-priced veteran was gone, and obviously you know the fans were like you know booing and just you know giving him shit and stuff and just and he said hey don't fuck don't fuck with me otherwise you know. I might. I'll, I'll just move the team, you know. Which really, is just like yeah. Cincinnati know, might be a best place to do that. I don't know if you can do that in New York right now, but yeah. What I to, mean, that's no. But I mean, that's a, to me, Cincinnati is like it's the oldest franchise in League baseball. But you know, two years later, look at all the guys who came up. You know, I mean, McLean at shortstop, Steer at third base. You know, their pitching is iffy. You know, because I mean, the, the Abbott is actually the young Abbott came up. I think it's six and zero. Oh, I'm just barely exaggerating, but uh, he's got an ERA of one point five. Who knows how, how long he's going to be able to do that. They lost Hunter Green. They lost Lodolo. But, I mean, right now, you know what I like? is like, and then you got someone like Eli De La Cruz who comes up and just a spark plug. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's impressive to watch him because he's a big man. He's a big man moving around like he's, you know, five foot eleven, And the way he swings the bat, it's pretty impressive. It's just, he's, you know. He's a he, he's a must watch guy. I mean, yeah. you talk about social media and all that stuff. You watch a game from the Reds. It used to be Votto. You lo I love watching Joe Votto. You know, a different guy, type of guy. But he's he's impressive. I mean, he can run. He hit for, he had, first of all his second game. He hit a home run. Everybody, the whole world, welcome to yeah. the world. That guy is just a stud. We all knew that. But he's hit for the happen. cycle, man. He's hit for the cycle exactly. last week. Exactly. A week later, he hits a recycle, and he's just dominating right now. It's fun to watch because. I mean, these guys, they need it. Cincinnati needs it. They haven't won in a long time. I think they, you know, they got Votto deserves to win a little bit. So to see yeah. them on top, it's pretty impressive. I didn't, I never thought I would see that. And, you know, not for at least a couple of years, but now they're there. They got the young core players are pretty good. Like you said, pitching is thin, but I mean, that's going to, I'm pretty sure they're going to come up with something in the minor leagues because they've been, yeah. they've been struggling for a long time. So they got some prospects coming up, but it's fun to watch this kid play because I don't know who you can compare him to. Who do you, I mean, who do you think he looks like? I mean, I don't know. You can't play. say. I think he's got more power than Ricky Henderson. Uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's as fast as maybe like, uh, uh, you know, who could I use as an example? Uh, Vince Coleman. I'm going way back. I know. Sorry. You know, for <laughs> yeah, those. Way, way back. Well, I'm trying to find some. No, but I mean, it, 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 it's been a long time since we've seen guys stealing like 70, 80, 100, you know, 100 bases a year. So it's hard to like find it. The, uh, so anyway, for those who don't know who Vince Coleman is, Wikipedia, what can I tell you, you know? But what yeah. I'm saying is, like, it's the complete package. And yeah. and the story I want to mention is because we knew we were going to talk about it, and then you sent me uh, you sent me on my phone something that you found, which is really hilarious. You sent me part two, so I'm thinking, okay, if he, he sent me part two. There's a part Imagine one. Imagine the first part. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, but I, I, I don't have the part three. Imagine. I'm missing the part three, and I can't find it anywhere. But anyway. Fill so, in the blanks, buddy. You're a comedian. <laughs> fill in the blanks. <laughs> no, but I mean, there was actually – it, it's a great and sad story at the same time. Like a lot of kids from the uh, Dominican Republic, poor family, you know, his, his talent, you know, yeah. attracts the attention, you know, a, a, a generous family takes him in, pays for the baseball school, not baseball school in the sense of like, you know, for those who don't know, it's like actually, you know, it, it's, it's actually baseball academies. I shouldn't say school, yeah. it's academies. There's a, that, that, that's one thing. And that, I, that's, I love the way life is so poetic because I remember, I remember the, uh, the, um, they were saying in the, the I'm not gonna say the documentary, but the story. They invited De La Cruz. There was a, there was a, sh a workout in front of a, a pro scouts, and they they invited him, but it wasn't for the scouts to look at him. It was like you know because there was like another shortstop who was actually better than him, and it goes we're gonna put him on the field so the other shortstop looks better. What the fuck, man? You don't tell that to a 15 year old kid. But you know that's how life can be amazing sometimes, you know, because the cat, the scouts actually noticed them. But when he signed, man, I mean, he weighed 150 pounds, and it just blew up, and it just took everybody's surprise, man. Yeah, he's 21 years old right now, so that's six years ago that he was that 15 year old kid to make someone else look better. And now he's in the big leagues, dominating with an amazing story. So, I mean, that's it's so fun to watch. These are the stories that you don't want to. That's why you love baseball. These stories yep. like this, a guy that's not even supposed to be there, he's a fill in. He's a guy that no one cares about. Let's make that kid look good. That's the next. I mean, he's a shortstop hitting lefty. He's going to hit 30, 40 bombs a year. I mean, I, it, it's amazing because he's, yeah. he's only 200 pounds right now. He's 6'5". He's going to weigh 230, 240. I mean, playing in Cincinnati, just pull the ball, pull the ball in the air. It's just a place that just travels. It's <laughs> They're in for it. The guys in Cincinnati, the fans in Cincinnati should be really happy to have this guy on because he's going to be there for a very long oh, time. Oh, and Cincinnati, the whole league. Yeah. I mean, look, the time that 
they said before he got called up, he hit a home run that was like almost like 500 feet or something. Something I'm exaggerating. I think it was with 450. Anyway, it's like it was the longest. Maybe maybe Simon, who's helping us uh, with the show, it's it, it was it, it was the longest recorded home run, uh, minor leagues and major league baseball included, of the last I don't know how many years. Uh, they timed him. Uh, he hit it. He, he he got a triple once in AAA. He ran from first base to third base in 11 seconds. What the, you know? I mean, like like you said, who are you gonna compare him to? Acuna right now is the, you know, is pretty much having an amazing season. Also, they they talk about Acuna being the first 30, 60 guy, like you know, 30 home runs, 60 stolen bases. Mm -hmm. But De La Cruz could be even better than that, man. It's it's it's, it's, it's 50 50. You talk about 40 40 club, you got a 50 50 guy. I mean, but the bags are bigger now. So, yeah. I mean, he's got nine, he's got nine stolen base, I think, this year. Nine stolen base. He's got three home runs. I mean, he's hit 30 home runs in the minor leagues in 2022. I mean, this kid has got it all. I mean, yeah. it's like, and, he's, and we keep talking, we talk about Otani, we talk about Trout, we talk about all those guys. And that now, I, I don't think I've ever seen that much talent playing baseball like that. It's pretty impressive to watch. And this kid comes in, he's 6'5. It's, yeah. And it's, it's not a fluke. Cool. Like, he's not like an overnight sensation. I mean, he's going to be there for a while. If everything goes right, I mean, it's, you know, I'm not on wood because I want him, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm wishing him the best, you know, but uh, I, it's, wow, it's, 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 what a plus for the game. The, the and people. having Votto, having Votto on his team, I think that's going to make him a, one of the greatest hitters because Votto is one of the smartest hitters out there. He's one of the guys that knows hitting, balance, and all that stuff that we talk about. That's why he's so good. And I think having that young kid underneath him, and Vado take care of him. That's yeah. going to be pretty special because the it's one thing to have talent. It's one thing to go up there and dominate, but he's going to fail. It's not. It's a matter of time. He's going to fail. He's going to go 0 for 20 or whatever it comes. I mean, but he's got speed, so he might not do that. But having Vado there, a mentor like this, a mental guy that can actually tell you, hey, you're going to go through these things. That's that's you can't put a price on that. So it's going to yeah. be fun to watch all year how he goes ups and downs. Going to be, you know, it's not. Hopefully, he's in the uh, All Star game hitting home runs because it's pretty impressive. Well, maybe not this year. Come on, give him a break. He just got called up, man. He can't go to the All Star. Uh -huh. the, the, the home run derby this year. Ah, oh, man. They, I hope they're not going to invite him this year. You think Why they will? Not? Why not? They want they want attention. He's the hottest thing in baseball right now, other than Otani. Yeah, but don't why play, not? They, yeah, they but don't grow the game. Take it. It's it's for the fans, right? Fans first entertainment. Yeah, which, go. yeah, I got the point. Yeah, I got the yeah. Thank you. But I mean, yeah. what I'm saying is like you, you, you just said it. The kid's 21 years old, man. I mean, I, let, let, let's go. This, let's say he wins the home run derby this year. They invite him. He wins it. That could screw mm -hmm. him up for the rest of the year, man. And, you know, uh, well, I don't know. Ask him, I, ask him if he would want to do that or not. He would jump. Of course, on it in a of course he would. But someone's gonna have to go. Hey, box. kid, they, one they, step they, at a time. They hit home runs at five o'clock every single day. That's what they do. I don't think he's. You know, I think he's locked in. At the, I don't think that's gonna affect him. I think it can only help Major League Baseball to put him on that All Star game. At least the home run contest. Guys don't want to do it. A lot of guys don't like to do it. Veteran guys don't really. You know, it's it might mess up their swing or whatever. This kid's twenty one years old. Show him to the world. Invite him there. Let him hit them. Let him in bombs. Just show him what kind of talent you're dealing with. I mean, this is this is a chance. I mean, I understand the fans are voting. So let the fan vote. Let them, you know, I think. Oh, he's he going to get in for that. sure. It's, I mean, well, the All-Star break is uh, in what? The, less than a month away. So no, it might be too short. But um, you what know what I also like? About? He's got seven games in the big. No, he's got 15, 30 games. Already? He's going to be. No, it's like oh, no, 30 games before bats. the All-Star game. Is that what you're saying? No, he's got 83 at-bats, and I think he should be in an All-Star. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. You're not – for someone who's been through the pressure of, like, you know, trying to – you're not putting any on, uh, any on him. I mean, the guy's 21 years old. You want him to win the All-Star derby, the uh, home run derby, put in the All-Star game, and just like, kids you know. Ready. Kids are different than we were. Kids are, like, they're oblivious to pressure now. I think they come up – Oblivious? They come up early. I mean, a lot of them are. I mean, because remember, you're back, when I played, when I played K-Team Canada, well, now they've got a following together. We talk about, again, social media. They know who this kid, you know, they're used to that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just, I think he's going to be fine. He's a smart player. He looks like he's very, he's very well surrounded within Cincinnati. He's got a lot of veterans. I think, why not? I'd yeah. love to see that. Well, I think, you know, from what I've seen from him, because, you know, he speaks through an interpreter or translator, whatever you want to call it, and then uh, he's got a chip on his shoulder from all the story we just talked about. I mean, he, he, was, he wasn't he was supposed to be that successful, you know? It was like a big gamble. I don't think he's... I, I read where his bonus money was, which was, like, decent, but anyway, not like, you know, the million some of them are getting. But he's got a chip on his shoulder. You hear him talk, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just beginning to show you. 
you know, you put me through some of that, those moments that we talked about. Like, yeah, you want me, you want me to, to, you want to make me look like shit? Well, fuck off. I'm gonna just remind you every day, you know, that you made a mistake by not signing me. I hope it stays like that for a while. I don't, I don't want him to be an angry man, but like, you know, not to lose that thing of like, I'm gonna prove you wrong for the next 10 years of my life, you know. He seems like he's got that edge. I mean, he seems like he's, uh, he's, he's, you know, like you said, he's failed before. He's been told that he can't do it. That's always. That's always a chip on someone's shoulder. You, people don't believe in you, and you want to prove them wrong. And I think that's really what he's doing. It's fun. It's fun. I mean, it's baseball is in good hand. I mean, baseball's got a lot of talent right now, and this guy is going to be going to be there a long time. And can't wait to see how many homers going to hit next year. Home runs fun. and stolen bases combined. That's what I want to see. You know, that's going to be yeah. an amazing yeah. show. Hey, it's time for the last uh, segment. Your favorite. Let's do this. It's named after you, the closer. I still feel weird drinking a cup with your face on it. It's feel like we're almost making out. That's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. not okay. I might, I might actually talk to my shrink about this, Bob, about this moment that I'm living right now. I go, what the fuck, man? I'm just drinking out of my friend's face. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, man, it's the last uh, segment, uh, the closer. We got a bunch of. Uh, there's a lot of things we didn't cover. Uh, I don't know where to start with. I mean, there's a couple of things. There was a big. Uh, there was a, a press conference today with the Mets owner, trying to calm down the uh, the uh, New York media. And trying to answer the question that he was asking, what the hell's wrong with the Mets? You know, are Buck Walter and the GM going to lose their jobs? Uh, apparently, he confirmed that not. And I kind of believe him. I don't think, you know, usually when they, when they call, like, whether it's the GM or, or the owner for a press conference, whatever he says, the opposite happens. But I think the guy, the guy doesn't seem like a freak show. You know, it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, that he's starving for attention. You know, I don't think he's as radical as the Steinbrenners were in their moves and stuff. But, man, you got to be scratching your head when you spend a billion dollars on yeah. three players. That's a lot of like, money. But, yeah. Yeah, you think? <laughs> and you're in fourth place Obviously. in the East, man. Okay, the Braves are going to be hard to beat because, to me, they're the complete team. But, you know, what the hell is going on with that team? That's the question we're asking all of us, you know? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, it's been – they've had good teams before. It's not like – it feels like it's almost a Met curse. I mean, they can't figure it out. They can't really get to that next level. Of course, we're going to talk about the closer. They lost the closer. Yeah, Diaz. That, that hurts a lot. Yeah. Diaz, that hurts a lot. And it's going to be – you know, the, you can't change that. But I think – you know, the, Buck yeah, but, yeah, but, is I'm going to stop you for a second. Yeah, they lost Diaz, but Robertson's doing a great job as a closer right now. His ERA is amazing. He doesn't get that many saves opportunities. Yeah, but he could be doing this in the eighth inning or the seventh inning. That changes a lot. Then that takes a lot of pressure. Good point. Good point. Starters and everything yeah. else. So I, I agree with you. It's like it's always excuses, injuries, and everything else. You got to figure it out. Players got to take advantage of it. You know, they got a lot of great pitchers up there. They're a little bit older. The guys are a little bit older. They give money to a lot of, uh, you know, a little. Well, more Scherzer better. and uh, Verlander combined are like over 80 years old. You know what I mean? It's like. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, they're great pitchers. They're amazing pitchers. Sometimes it doesn't always work out. I mean, you can spend a billion dollars. It doesn't always work out. It's just sometimes this, that's, that's the game of baseball. I mean, you got to get on the field. You got to win games. And it's not the manager. It's not the front office. It's not even the player. It's just a group. You know, sometimes it doesn't click. And you know, hopefully they can just have a team player only meeting and show themselves that they can do it because the owners <laughs> spend the money. You spend the money. He's, you know, he yeah. can't say that he hasn't tried. He's tried and he got the manager. Buck Walker is amazing. Now, how do you put it together? Who's the leader? Who's going to stand up and say, you know what? It's on us guys. Let's do this. How do we fix that? How do we write the ship? And uh, where do we go from here? How do we get better a little bit every day? And, you know, forget yeah. the media, forget the New York park. Because if it's anywhere else, there's no meeting like this. They don't have the owner talking to anybody. But, you know, it's New York, so it's a little bit different. Well, obviously, and, you know, I mean, you know what it's like to play in a big market. So, you know, I mean, the, the pressure is different than, you're, you know, if you're struggling in other cities. I can understand that. But, I mean, and it's I just don't understand. I mean, Nemo is the leadoff fitter. is doing a great job. I mean, but, you know, when you got Alonso batting 240, you have two rookies who actually are getting rather batting, uh, playing time with Batty and, uh, and uh, Alvarez. But, you know, they were supposed to be the next big things. They're struggling. Their first season, it's kind of normal. But at the same time, it's like everything that seems to be wrong seems to be happening at the same time. You know, Lindor, man. I, but you know what? There was something. I don't know if you remember last year that when Lindor and Baz were, like, playing. Baz was still on the team. and There was an arrogance to it and stuff. And I don't know if it's carrying over of, like, you know, maybe we just cross that line where, you know, you have to, like, rebuild the the the, the – the relationship with the fans and then you're not putting up the numbers so whenever you show up at the ballpark every day that black cloud's got to be over your head no 
you're New York. I mean, there's always a black cloud. If you, you, know, you go <laughs> for one, you go for one, they're going to be very good. That's the beauty of this market. That's a passion they have the fans and that's expectations of winning in New York. And that's just, it comes with the territory. I did it in Boston. I was getting booed off the field, got booed during the parade. It comes with the territory. Now, it's like it's about you got booed party. during the parade, man. You never told oh, yeah. me that. That's sad. Oh, yeah. I feel like giving you a hug just for that. I'll, I'll, I'll drink. I'll drink out of the cup, so it's like I'm giving you a hug on the. <laughs> but I think they're gonna figure it out. I mean, they're they're it's just this year they're 36 and 44. I mean, they gotta figure it out. I mean, there's too much money spent. They they got all the weapons. They got everything. Now the players got to put together. It's in, you know now that's the the magic potion. There you got all the you know you got the whole recipe. Now you got to put it together. You got all the ingredients there. Yeah. Now how do we put it together? How do you get the best out of your players? And that's you know that's gonna have to come from the guys looking themselves in the mirror as players and as managers. And how do you get the best out of these guys? And I don't know who's the leader. Lindor seems like he's a leader. You got a. Uh, you got the polar bear that seems like he's a good guy to go to, but you know, these are just pieces unless they're together and they work together. They click together. And, you know, sometimes it's crazy. You go out there, you put up 16 runs and then you, you know, and you can't, but pitch. you lose 18, 16. <laughs> exactly. It's crazy. It's just the way baseball works. Yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't click and they might turn around and win 10 in a row. You know, that's possible. And that's, yeah. uh, that's how crazy this game is. But, You know, until then, you know, they're in a little bit of trouble, I would say. Well, I would, you have to win I the East. You have to win the East because I think, you know, obviously the Central is going to get, you know, one of those weak teams in. Uh, and I think, you know, the wild cards. Oh, no, that's right. We got five teams now for the wild card. And so, yeah, so because I think, you know, you, there, there'll be two from the West. I don't think I'm predicting the, we are not even July 1st. And I'm predicting that I, I think San Diego is already out of it. I mean, you know, <laughs> Wow. Honestly, well, yeah. I mean, the, you know, so you're like, thinking Arizona is going to hang in there and just like literally keep going that way. And you, I don't, I don't know. I think, no, I think, I don't think, the, I don't think Arizona is going to win the division. I think we're underestimating, underestimating the San Francisco Giants. Of course, you know, you're going to pull for for your Dodgers. I, I mean, they're not, they're not struggling, but I mean, they should be dominating. I think, I think Arizona is going to miss that, that that veteran group that can actually help the kids settle down towards the end of the pennant race and stuff but the thing is if they decide to make some moves in arizona they can because most of their good prospects are already up with the team so you mm -hmm. can afford you know to like move you know your second tier prospects that are still attractive to other teams because you know the key ones are, are you know they're not going to move you know obviously uh, uh, carbon uh, i forget his last name the second podcast in a row so but i mean you know what's that Take your time. Take no, your time. Use your anyway. words, man. It's not uh, – Corbin, help me out, uh, Carol. C Corbin Carroll. Jeez, all right, I got it. So I think <laughs> – I don't think they're going to win the division, but I think, you know, they'll be in the hunt. I think we're uh, all the way until the end. It's a very interesting team. You know, they got a committee – they got a bullpen by committee. Uh, they, keep, they went from Chaffin to Castro, and it's McGough, if I could say it right and stuff. But, yeah, obviously, if it, you know, I think the Giants and the Dodgers will probably finish, you know, And I think, you know, they'd be, they might be the first division to have three teams to make the playoffs because, you know, Central won't have two teams. And the East, unless Miami, well, the Phillies also can probably make like, you know. But once again, if that's another team, the Phillies don't seem to be getting their wind in the cells. They don't seem they'll, they'll go on that winning streak, but then, you know, they hit a wall once again. So, Yeah, I mean, you see all the teams that spend a lot of money, San Diego, New York. I mean, that's just they're just at the bottom. It's 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 poetic it justice. You, you don't buy a team. You, you create one, the Cincinnati yep. model. What do you uh, think of the fact that uh, – I didn't ask you that. I want to go back to – actually, we didn't talk about the cards. St. Louis, same thing. The big question is because, I mean, you always expect the cards to be relevant. You know, I mean, if they, even if they don't make the playoffs, they, they always make a push. They've been doing that for over a century. You know, you can count on one hand, you know, the disastrous seasons uh, they've had. I don't think this year's a disastrous season, but by card standard, I think it is. And the whole question is like, what do you do? I mean, do you, do, do, and they've said out loud, we're not going to go through a huge rebuild. We might move some pieces. What do you do oh, with Ronaldo and, and Goldschmidt? His teams need to stop using the remodel. Start using a remodel. You said we're remodeling. It's a little easier on the fans. So we we're just remodeling a little bit. We're not going to start doing all over, but we're going to remodel. But they need, they definitely do need a remodel, at least a facelift. I mean, they need to look at what's working, what's not working. They spend some good money, but like you said, it's just it's baseball. I mean, the Cubs 
Cubs spend some money. They're not where they should be. The Brewers, which is expecting, I didn't think they're going to be on top. The Reds should, there's no way the Reds stay up there. I don't think so. I think the Reds are going to be third or fourth. What In the division? Today? Yeah. I At the end of the season? Third. No way. I think they'll no, be finished third, they might. Yeah. They might lose it, but I mean, I, I mean. I think they'll be third. I think they'll be third in that division. Between who? Between uh, after Milwaukee and Chicago? Yeah, I think so. Because I don't think. I yeah, I like the fact that Pittsburgh said, you know, it, and I was surprised by that. I think the whole world was. They said we might be buyers at the deadline because our division yeah. is so. They didn't say weak, right. but I mean, we might still be in the hunt. I love to hear that, man, because once again, that's another team where most of the big name rookies are up. In the majors, you know, O'Neill Cruz will come back from his injury. Um, you know, pitchers are getting maturity. Great closer once again. So uh, I love to hear that. It's going to be a, the, the July trade deadline is going to be really interesting this year. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch you know, whose team's making the moves and who believes in their players. And, you know, it's going to be – that's why I love the walk card. That changes the whole – that changes everything. Yeah. It, keeps, it keeps everybody in there. These, you know, we complained a lot about the rule change and everything. That's a great change. I love that. And I think – you know, the more teams in the playoff, the more th things that think they can be in the playoffs, and there's a lot more money involved if they do that. And I think that's kind of that's kind of what the Pirates see. Like they they understand the value of going to the playoffs. I think yeah. the last time was probably with Russell, our boy Russell was there. I think that's the last time they're in the playoffs, right? That one game, this one game, right? Yeah, but you know, actually, what they they said today because you know, with the we the uh, Cubs and the Cards actually playing in London, uh, you know, the first time you know the baseball game was played in Europe. Uh, Major League Baseball to like showcase baseball around the world and I was watching PTI my favorite show pardon the interruption we have to have one of those two guys on the show man if we ever get like yeah. Tony Kornheiser or Mike Wilbont I'm just gonna I might be speechless you might have to do the whole show by yourself and I'll just Very you know good. go like g -g 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 try to mumble some words but anyway I'm <laughs> such a huge fan but since the since Major League Baseball wants to expose the world to to their product, they might actually come back from 162 games and bring it back to 154, which it was, yeah, and before the 1961 season. Uh, close, anyway, end of the 50s, early 60s, when when Roger Maris got uh, tied Babe Ruth's record, uh, broke Babe Ruth's record, there was an there was an asterisk because they actually were already up to 162. Anyway, that's not the fucking point. Why am I going off that like that? <laughs> The point is, like, with 154 games, you know, I would make that first round of the playoffs a two out of three. I I love the wild card. I hate the fact that it's decided by one game. Yeah, I don't like the one game. Not I in baseball. Two out of three. Yeah. Like the, World, the, the College World Series we just watched, two, the best out of three. I think that will oh, be kind man, of fun. Yeah. Roll back to 154. Like, that, like they, they're talking about PTI. That They're right on. I mean, why? Why go to November? I mean, you got time. Just, yeah. just slow down. 154. Really let the guys rest a little more. And, uh, you know, just I think that's the way to do it. They're, they're right. I mean, they're first of all, the, all the all the all the biggest names and all the records in the history were at 154. I mean, we talk about Cy Young. He did a 154. You talk about Maris. All these guys, all the records are all 154. So why not bring it back? And get more yeah. playoffs. So, Maris was 162. I want to check that, but anyway, but uh, but before that, that's what. Yeah, 1961 was the first year. So. I love that, man. You're quick on a computer. You need the uh, yeah. One thing I'm quick on. You mentioned the uh, college world series, man. How exciting was that? I mean, it was it was exciting because I mean there was such a massacre and a lot of runs and stuff. But it is on my bucket list to go spend one week in Omaha and watch all those games, man. What a great spectacle, especially in the finals. You know, I mean, you know, the top three guys were playing on the same field. And for the first time ever, we might see two uh, teammates going one and two, number one and two. We talked about it on the French side. I want to debate it again. Pittsburgh's got the first choice. Do you go for a uh, cruise or you go for uh, what's uh, uh, Skinness? Is that how you say it? Skins, 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 skins. Paul Skins, a right-handed yeah. right pitcher exactly. for LSU. Do you go for the hitter uh, or the pitcher? I, I like, especially they're using wood bats, so I'm, I don't like that. I mean, they're not using wood bats. Sorry, they are not yeah, using wood bats. I bats. wish they were. If they were, we were using wood bats, I would probably go, I don't know, they're comparing them to Trout. I don't know. I would go to the pitcher. I think Skeen's got to be. You can't do that to a kid comparing to Trout. Him. He's coming out of college, man. Don't, fuck, I know. don't put that Crazy. kind of pressure on him, you know? Compare it to De La Cruz. No, I, <laughs> compare yeah. it to the, he's the next De La Cruz and stuff. Well, I don't know. I, I think in both cases, whoever they pick is going to be up 
I'll, I'm sure they'll be up next year, man. I don't think the, either one of those two kids is going to stay in the minors for very long, you know. They, it, it, and I th I'm, if I'm not wrong, people can correct me on that. I think they're both seniors, which means they had four years of college ball, you know, and uh, and of maturity, uh, physically and mentally, to actually, you know, be able to face what's gonna what's coming up ahead of them and stuff. And uh, you know what? I was gonna like have yeah, fun to disagree with you. I go for the pitcher too. No, it's their big weakness right now. I think they got a nice, they got a nice cu uh, nucleus. Of uh, offensive bats, a couple of guys are still coming up, so it'll be interesting. But I mean, aside from Keller, who gains some maturity, uh, the Oviedo as he had a good start, but you know, in, he, was he a, full, a Rule Five draft pick or something? But uh, no, but um, they need, they need, they need, they need presence on the mound, and uh, so. Uh, but you know, let's make hey. a deal. Let's make a date, man. Let's uh, one year. I mean, maybe not next year, but soon enough. I want to go see the College World Series, man. What a great spectacle! It's, it's, it's one of the greatest show in uh, sports. Let's, let's get in our van trip. We got we talked about it. Yeah. Get that van life. Well, now we got to go to Savannah. We got to Savannah. We got to go Omaha. You know what uh, we'll yeah. do? We'll, it'll be we'll we'll call the trip. The trip has to be in. in we stop in cities that ends with the with the letter A or the sound A. You know, Omaha, Savannah, because seven has an H. But anyway, the, that'd be the A tour. We'll call it. With Exactly. <laughs> hey, man, thanks for being with us, man. I can't believe we talked that long, man. Obviously, we could keep uh, going on forever. Uh, since we're live right now, it's uh, past midnight. And no, no, it's uh, past 11 o'clock. Sorry. I'm still, man, I'm giving crap for getting the time wrong. And I'm still, uh, but uh, man, it was a lot of fun. Uh, God, I love doing this. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, uh, people are following us more and more. And, uh, you know, uh, we as much as we can, you know, we try to go on social media and, and put up some videos where we can have some fun. Here's how you can follow us. Um, even though we, do, we obviously do the show in French and in English. Uh, the videos are in French and in English. And uh, so come and have fun with us on the social media. And um, I didn't mention it at the beginning of the show. I should have. Uh, but uh, the next, uh, uh, we're going to be live on July the 3rd, which is next Monday. To make up for the fact that we're, we're usually on every two weeks, but uh, yeah, I was in Europe for a while, sorry. And uh, so we're going to be on next week on um, Monday, July 3rd. And then we're going to be on the week after that, but not the Monday, but the Tuesday. Yeah, we're hard to follow. You know, it's just the way we are, man. That's just... We're random. Yeah, we're random. That's what happens when you like you, you, to, to ADHD, whatever you want to call it. And thanks That's for right. all the names on the board right now for uh, helping us uh, create this podcast, which is, uh, man, like I said, way too much fun. Love you, bud. We'll talk soon. Love you, and, buddy. Uh, Take care. Have yeah, fun. see you guys uh, on July 3rd. Thanks for being with us. Good night. See you guys. Des gens striqués dans le pays Et avec des lunettes Qui font peur La victoire est signée Game over